couple of weeks ago, Pharrell, 21 Savage, and Tyler the Creator dropped what is, in my opinion, the music video of the year so far. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can replicate the stylistic look and apply that to any 3D character. We're going to be using 100% free softwares in this entire video. I'm going to show you how to set up this cool clay style shader and mix it with your characters. And to do this, I'm going to use Blender. But wait, what if you want to take it one step further? Or what if you don't use Blender? In the description of this video, you can find my online store. I'm going to link below this new clay shader pack that I just created inspired by this. A bunch of awesome materials in there that you can use in any 3D software, even Element 3D. In the pack will be video tutorials on how to use these, how to add them to your asset bin in Blender, and I even have a Blender project file with everything set up. Again, you don't need any of that to do this. So let's dive right into it. As always, if you're new here, slap a like on the video to help support the channel. Comment down below anything you'd like to see next. If you like seeing how things like this are made, slap that subscribe button to join the community. All right, guys, so if you don't have it, download Blender. Again, it is free. We're going to start off here creating a basic clay stop motion shader. Once we've done that, we're going to finesse some stuff and apply it to a custom character. We're in a new project here. We're going to go ahead and just apply it onto this basic cube. If you'd rather do it with a sphere, you can click Shift A, go to Mesh, put in a UV sphere, we go to the modifiers and add in a subdivision surface and then just bump that up. We're going to go and click on this material properties tab with our sphere selected. We're going to go and click this new button and then we're just going to choose a base color for this shader. So I'll go ahead and just choose orange to be able to actually see the shader. Right now we're just in the viewport shading. We want to go to viewport rendered mode. I'm also going to leave a link below to a YouTuber named Southern Shoddy. He has a bunch of awesome uh, videos for creating stop motion style stuff in Blender. So if you want to pick up some extra tips, I actually learned how to create this basic one from him. And then I tried to build on it and apply it to more in-depth characters. So I'll leave that below. We're going to scroll this up here, this timeline, and we're going to change from our timeline into our shader editor. And you can see your nodes here. If you're not seeing these, just check on use nodes. You can also go up to edit preferences and search for in your add-ons node wrangler make sure that's turned on give you some nice little commands here to make this look more like clay let's load a texture into our roughness map so we're going to select this principal shader we're going to go ahead and click Control t and since we checked on that node wrangler in our add-ons that comes included within blender by the way it's going to give us this basic little setup here it gives us an image texture node a mapping node and a texture coordinate mode so we can load in our image to give it a more clay like look and then we can just change the scale and positioning here so we're going to click in our image texture open so these are three fingerprint textures that are in my clay shaders pack i'm going to give you one of these textures for free so check out the link in the description to download that for free so we'll just load in prints one Instead of loading it into our base color, you can see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and plug that into our roughness. A little bit hard to see. Let's go in and just add um, a few lights just to see that better. So we can click this one, I'll click G just to move this main light around. And um, in our light settings, this tab, change that around. Or you can click Shift A, go to light and add in an area lights. And you can like fully position this to your liking. So we'll bump up the power on this area light. And I'm also going to grab our camera here and um, just position that in our object properties so that it's facing. So if we zoom in here, you can see the thumbprint, but it's very slight. So let's add something in here just to be able to control the values of that thumbprint. So I'm going to click Shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and I'll place that node in between the image texture and the principal BSDF like that. Now what you can do is actually take these values and if you crunch these values here, you can see we can control the way that the thumbprint is looking. So if you just take the whites, maybe push that in. You can also click that white little value here, click this color and just lower it if you want to control that. Now we're going to go in here, click Shift A and we're going to add a bump node. So this will allow us to kind of make those textures protrude a bit from the surface and look more like a 3D texture, more realistic. So we can use our image texture that we set up earlier. First off, and this is pretty important, you wanna take the color space of that image texture node, change it from sRGB over to non-color, and then go ahead and take this color and connect it to the height of our bump node. And then connect the bump node, this normal section, to the normal tab in the BSDF and you can see how it's starting to protrude. So you can play around with the strength. You want a little bit less texture going in there. And what we also want to do is click Shift A, add in a little invert node, and just put this in between the image texture and the bump. All right, so looking pretty good. We'll just keep that kind of slight. In the main settings over here for our BSDF, you can change the specular, which will kind of make this look more um, wet or less wet. You can also, again, mess around with that color ramp. So you have full control over the way that you want your shader to look. 
All right, and then the last little step here before we apply and mix this with our character, we're gonna make this look a bit more lumpy. So we can select here, go to our modifiers tab. We're gonna click to add a new modifier and we're gonna add in a displace. So in the displace, it's gonna create a new texture here. So just click new and go down to this textures tab and under type here, we're going to change it to clouds. Now what you can do is take the scale of your clouds here and just kind of pump that up and go back to your modifiers. You can also play with the strength. It's just like a little bit lumpy. All right, now last but not least, before we mix this in with our characters and I show you some other tricks, you wanna give this texture sort of animated stop motion effect. So if you go to this mapping node, you can change any of these values. So if we take the scale, put these up to two. Now what you can also do is you can create little keyframes so that our fingerprint maps rotate along the sphere. You can hover over any of your rotation axes. You can click I to insert a keyframe. And if you switch back over your timeline, you can move a couple of frames, however long you want this animation to be. So maybe like two or three frames, switch back over to your shader editor and you can put one of these rotation values to 90 and then click I to set that keyframe. So once you made that keyframe, so it rotates 90 degrees, I'm gonna move another three frames. So one, two, three, back to our shader editor. If you guys are working in a better workspace, probably is a bit easier. Rotate that axis by another 90 degrees. So we'll put in 180 and we'll click I. Timeline one, two, three, 270, and we'll hit I. So in our shader editor, we can select the mapping node that we were working with. We can switch the workspace over to the dope sheet and you can see our keyframes. And again, make sure those are spaced out. If you click play, you're gonna see what it looks like. Still a little bit too fast for the stop motion style. So what we can do is select all those keyframes. We can click T and we can make the interpolation constant. So if we go over to our graph editor here, so go ahead and select the axis here. Just open up the shader node tree. And remember we added the rotation onto the Z axis. So select that to be able to see that blue line here. And then what you can do is click N to bring up this little side menu and then go down to modifiers click add modifier and then click cycles. So now you're gonna see it repeats infinitely throughout the entire composition. So that's how you can make that animated texture. We just needed this sort of animated style for our shader to move on to our next part, which is mixing it with our character. So render properties doesn't matter. We don't even, we're not even gonna render or do anything with this. We're just going to save it in a second. What you can do is go to the output properties and you can change the frame rate from 24 FPS down to 12. So go custom and then 12. And then whenever you play that, this is your fully stop motion style with the animation. All right, so our basic little clay shader is ready. You can go ahead and file save this. And alternatively, what you can do is even if you're in the newer version of Blender, you can go to the asset browser workspace here. You can find the material that you just made. We'll name that clay tut and right click it and you can mark it as an asset for later use. And that's only gonna be within this current file. So make sure what you do is go to edit preferences, you go to your file paths, make a little asset folder, and then just save this project file into this asset folder. So you see that here's mine, we can click here just to find the path and I'll just control C to copy that. And then I can go to file, save as, and I'll paste the path in here. So enter, you see here's where my clay shaders are. So I already did it. Um, you can save it in there if you're again in Blender 3.0. And whenever you just go to your asset library, click my Click, your, click on your assets folder. You should see it here in the unassigned in any new project. So if I click file new and we go to our assets, here they all are. If you don't have the newest version of Blender, you can always go up to file, um, append, and then just find that project file that you just saved. So tutorial clay shader, and you can, and you can just load in whatever material you had here. So find the material, load it in. So now that we've done that, we need to create a character. I'm gonna create a character using one of the methods from my four ways to create 3D characters fast tutorial that I made about a year ago. I talk about a lot of the workflows that I use or a lot of the alternative methods. There's so many different ways to make 3D characters. You guys can make them in Blender for free. You guys could use plugins. You guys can choose whatever method you want to create a character. You can use my specific method using FaceGen and Daz. If 
you want like a photorealistic character of a specific person like I did with Tyler the Creator, or if you just wanna test this on your own custom character or even just a free 3D file that you find on like CG Trader, Turbo Squid, whatever, then that works too. All you need is a random character with some UV mapped textures, skin textures, and you need your clay shader, which I just showed you how to create. So here's a little time lapse of me going through and creating the Tyler the Creator character. And again, like you just mentioned, I show this entire workflow in my four ways to make characters. Definitely prefer this just because Daz has a huge library. So I've got some preset clothes in there and do other cool things like that. So once I'm ready, I'm gonna use the Daz to Blender bridge just to bring my character from Daz over into Blender. And the beautiful thing about that, it loads all of the Daz textures straight into Blender. So if I go to my shader editor here, you guys can see what that looks like. So once you have set up your 3D model or character, let's go ahead and mix together this clay animated texture with our character model here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a cube for now. I'm gonna switch over to my asset library. And again, if you guys aren't in the newest version of Blender, you can just go file append. I'm gonna apply that clay material that we made in the other project file to my cube, just as a quick placeholder. And then I'm gonna select the cube and go over to the shader editor. Now what you can do is just select all of these nodes except for the material output node. You don't really need that one. So before we copy and paste this with those nodes selected, we're gonna click shift G to put that into a group. You can click back on the material to see that little group node. And then we can select that group node. I'm gonna rename this to clay shader. And then I'll click control C to copy it. We'll go back to our skin texture. In the material properties tab here, I can cycle through all the different textures that I want to work on. So let's start with the face and then I'll click control V to paste in that group. Now, the reason why we're pasting in a group and not all the nodes at once, A, it keeps it a little more organized, but B, if you copy and paste without grouping, it's going to remove all those keyframes for the animated texture that we set up earlier. So the easy workaround with this, you group the textures, paste them in like that. And then whenever you want to change any of these settings, you can just right click on the group and click ungroup. This way you're still gonna have all those keyframes that we set up earlier. So whenever we mix it with the skin, you'll see it animated across the face. You won't have to add the keyframes every time you apply to each of the textures on your character. So what we wanna do here is we wanna click Shift A and we want to add in a mix shader node. So go ahead and take the principal BSDF from our first clay shader that we made and connect the output of that into shader one for our mix shader. And then what we need to do is a little bit of setup. This is gonna differ depending on what you did. Um, if you did my exact workflow, the DAS to Blender, then all you have to do is disconnect the material outputs for EV and cycles that they created for you and connect the little eye ray shader from DAS into our shader one. And make sure, again, you're doing it for both the cycles and the EV node that they do here. You may not even have to worry about that if you're not working through DAS. Just see Blender start to update and there we go. So it looks super ugly right now. So let's go in and just play with the settings and make it look a lot more passable. So first off, you can play with the value for the actual mix shader. This will determine the weight um, of each shader. You can play around with the mapping here. So just go to the mapping node from our clay shader and play around with that until you have the pattern of the face looking the way you want. Again, you can use that color ramp node just to change around the amount that the roughness is showing. So those fingerprint textures, you can play with the bump because depending on what you're projecting onto, you may need to just mess around with all these until you have it looking the way you want. And if you really wanted to, you can even select the base color, the orange base color that we set up earlier for the clay. And you can just use that eyedropper to have it match the skin color. So from here, it really just comes down to copy and pasting that node setup we set up for our face texture onto the other textures. We're gonna select our node group. I'm gonna click Shift G to group it again, and I'll name it clay. I'll click Control C to copy it. I'll click over on our character. We'll go to our material properties and find the torso. And then I'll click Control V to paste in the group. Then all you have to do is click Shift A, slap in another mix shader, connect your torso skin to the mix shader, and then connect your clay shader to the mix shader, and then connect them all to the material output. Easy as that. And again, if you wanna change anything in your clay shader, just right click and ungroup it. Go ahead and play with those settings, depending on what you're texturing, and then just rinse and repeat those steps for each of the other textures. The steps are pretty easy in terms of application. The workflow in of itself is mainly just a ton of tweaking and just getting down the right look that you ultimately want. Want. The only other things I did here was just add a little um, Yushanka S hat like Tyler the Creator had in the original music video. So I just found a free Yushanka model online. Then I went up to object quick effects. I added in a little fur particle system and just played around with those settings until I had a furry looking Yushanka. From there, I also went in and added lighting. I even added in some motion capture onto the face and I'm not gonna go into all the nitty gritty details of the full character creation workflow in this video, but I will tell you, I am planning on creating a giant masterclass on different ways to create 3D characters 
from scratch all the way starting from nothing to fully animated face, animated body, and fully designed scenes. That will be coming soon. In the meantime, you guys can of course watch those other free tutorials that I've made talking about 3D characters. We've got a bunch of them. So before I render this out, of course, I want to go to my output settings, change that FPS to 12, and then I'm just going to export this out. I just exported out an EV just so I wouldn't have to wait along with the cycles render. And then in After Effects, I made a new composition, imported in multiple files, and just imported in all of those images that we generated from the render as a sequence. After Effects will always import an image sequence as 30 FPS. So you can just right click on the TIFF sequence, go to interpret footage main, and just make sure you assume the frame rate of 12. And check it out. I think it looks really cool and I'd love to see what you guys create using this method as well as using that clay shader pack. If, if you do decide to pick it up, there's a ton of other customizable looks that you guys can play with so you're not locked into just using that little shader that we generated in this tutorial. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.